What's up guys, how's it going? Um, so, full disclosure, I am not in my usual locale, obviously. Uh, some of you guys know, before I left to go to Colorado for a couple of months, I had to move out of my place. I was living in kind of an artist community uh, in Los Angeles, and when I came back, I was planning on getting an apartment. Well, I've been here for like three weeks now, and the apartment search still continues, so my friend Matt, uh, who you saw in the episode with Heather DePriest, which reminds me, I gotta talk to him about that footage, uh, kindly sublet me his super hip Airstream, uh, that is actually in the back of the warehouse that I used to live in. Uh, so I'm back where I originally was, just in a different spot. Uh, this Airstream is pretty cool. Uh, if you've been following my work for a long time, you probably saw it maybe two years ago. I shot with it with Brittany Geller and like a motorcycle. Um, that was just on the outside. Now that I have full reign of the Airstream, I'm going to shoot hopefully in the next week or two um, just a real uh, kind of fun hip story around you know, like a travel kind of story uh, using the Airstream as kind of like a set piece. So super excited about that, but I have a workspace, but unfortunately it's in a kind of co-working area, so recording video and audio there is a pain in the ass and never works out very well because there's people and it's loud and so on and so forth. But I digress. So many of you guys have asked me for more uh, Photoshop, Capture One, retouching type stuff and I haven't done a whole lot of uh, fun shoots this week I've had to do a bunch of paid tests which weren't necessarily the greatest for video um, but I did have one shoot that I unfortunately was not able to record video on but uh, I'm super stoked on the pictures I mentioned before that I'm kind of trying to rebrand a little bit make my work a little bit more um, commercially viable here in Los Angeles and given the market so I'm trying to kind of spice things up a little bit this shoe was with a model named Ellie at Next Models here in Los Angeles which she was amazing I really love shooting her um, mark my words that kid is gonna be a star like I, I really do think so um, and I don't say that very often so we're going to my general workflow usually is, uh, I start in Capture One obviously with the raw footage. Capture One uses a zero to five star system. I start with the, all the zero star images, which would be all of the raws. And I'll go through and I'll just flag right off the bat all of the ones that maybe even remotely catch my eye. I'll just give them one star right off the bat. Once I've got that first kind of culling done where I threw away any of the ones where the model might have been blinking or like not looking their her best or whatever the case may be. I throw those out um, and then that's when I start working on the toning usually and then I further edit down my selects after I have done the toning. That way I can kind of see generally speaking how they're all going to look. So. I'm going to go back through and retone this image and explain to you uh, as I do it what I did and why, so on and so forth. So this shot was actually shot on the street right outside my studio uh, in downtown Los Angeles and there's always a food truck outside and so I wanted to do something a little bit fun and kind of different and out of the norm for me. So. We went down there and bought Ellie a giant bright orange Fanta and she drank it for the shot. So, um, usually when I'm working on toning and stuff like that, I, uh, or retouching in general, I'm working on a 27 inch Thunderbolt display, but because I wanted to record this, I'm just working straight off of my laptop. It's not my preference as far as, um, how I usually work but it's okay for the for the purposes of showing you guys kind of the the back end I'm totally okay with it so this is the raw image first thing that I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna cool it off just a little bit because we're gonna end up adding in some saturation we'll 
call it like 61, 10 ish. And then it's a little too, too much on the tint. I'm going to do something like that. All right. Uh, We'll probably play around with the actual Kelvin temperature a little bit more later as I kind of get into exactly making the, the image look like what it's supposed to look like. So, working in this exposure dialogue here in, in Capture um, is where I kind of do the bulk of my toning and color choice type stuff. So, I'm gonna just add a little bit of global contrast and uh, a little bit of saturation. That's probably too much. Give it a nice, like, solid number of five. Call both five. Five for contrast and five for saturation. Um, just because I don't like, I like numbers that can either end in multiples of five or, or end in zero. So, um, the exposure is fine. We're going to leave that there. Uh, oh, why is this? No, I have two panes of that there. And usually when I'm doing this, I'm listening to music really loud. And once I start actually retouching, I'm going to have to do that. Um, and then I'll just record a voiceover because you guys would be really quiet for an extended period of time, which would be no fun. Um, the high dynamic range slider in Capture One is really awesome. Um, and this one is fairly backlit, so I'm going to bring it kind of, uh, something like that. I'm just watching to see like that kind of the building in the background sort of materialize. And I'm going to lift the shadows just a little bit. Too much. Something like that, just to kind of lift up some of the details in her hair and uh, stuff like that. So. So far, so good. Uh, now, um, for the, like a lot of what my work is kind of known for is the weird color casts and tinges that I do. Um, I usually either do that using curves or levels. I kind of interchange between the two. Um, they essentially do the same thing. Um, so one's not necessarily better than the other. Um, I've got levels open, so we're just gonna do it in levels. So, we're going to go switch over to the red channel, and we're going to bring the reds up a bit, just on the shadow side, uh, so the top left corner of the levels graph. Now you can kind of see on all of the shadows of the image, which is a pretty good chunk of the image, there's kind of a red cast to it, which I really like. Now blue and orange obviously look great together Bronco Broncos uh, blue jeans orange Fanta and I'm actually going to kind of add a little bit of blue to the shadows overall maybe like 10 points of blue in the shadows something like that um, yeah that looks pretty solid now, one thing that I always do on just about all of my images is a negative vignette, so like a darkened vignette. Um, I typically find that around a stop to a stop and a quarter works pretty well for most images. If you go much higher than that, it starts to like crunch into the model too much, um, which you don't want. But oops, there we go. Um, usually, like a, a a one and a quarter or one uh, minus one sorry um, stop on the vignette usually works really well now I might bring some more back into this just a little bit so the initial like I had initially cooled it down quite a bit I'm gonna undo that kind of split the difference it was at like 6900 I think to start we'll call it like 65 uh, that overall looks really good uh, because I've already gone through and made these as selects I can just gonna go ahead and export this 
Um, I have a process recipe for how I process my raws. You can see the settings here. Um, it just spits out a PSD nice and easy, good for retouching. So let's start actually doing some of the skin retouching on this this beast. And first things first, like I absolutely have to have music. And if you guys don't like metal, sorry, you're wrong. So. Alright, so I've said it before and I'll say it again. My general theory when it comes to retouching is it's more about removing distracting visual elements than making things look perfect or 100% clean and completely unrealistic. It's just kind of removing things that will detract from the overall visual impact of the image. So luckily with Ellie, she has really good skin. She's super young, so that definitely makes things easier. But I started by just giving her some overall skin cleanup, removing a few blemishes and things like that on the face, and, and just doing some overall cleanup, nothing major. It's just a matter of healing and then some dodging and burning and things like that. I don't really use any super complex or overly fancy tricks or, or anything like that. I don't tend to do things like uh, frequency separation or, or anything like that, and definitely no blurring of the skin. That's just something that I can't stress enough. I, it looks terrible, I hate the way it looks, and it's just kind of a, a general no-no. So I don't do it. Luckily for me, because of that, my retouching is usually not a very extensive process and not super time consuming. I think this picture took maybe 15 minutes. We're seeing it here sped up to 500% and it's uh, obviously very minimal and simple. It's a lot of just little minor subtle tweaks that overall make a big impact on the image. Uh, you do see me taking out things like dark spots in the clothing, some wrinkles and stuff like that, which seem like they would make little to no difference in the overall image, but altogether when you see everything before and after, a lot of little subtle things kind of pile up to make a nice overall impact and, and a really clean overall image. As I said before, with, with Ellie being young and having really good skin, it, it makes things easy. Um, people will often ask me how long I spend. Um, as I said before, this image was about 15 minutes. Uh, I think for most full length fashion images, 15 to 20, 30 minutes per image is kind of like an average for me uh, if the model is fully clothed. Now, if she's not wearing much or not wearing anything, there's a lot more skin so it can take longer. But overall, uh, that's kind of a good general average that I would say for, for most fashion images, for me personally. That's not to say that it's gonna be the same for everybody. One of the last things that I did with this image was to, after, you know, after finishing cleaning up all of the skin and things like that, I add a dark curves layer um, and I mask it out. And what I'm doing here is adding some pop to the sunglasses just to make them look real dark and just stand out a lot more. I like the way it looks. It's just a simple you know, curves to bring the exposure down and then masking out the sunglasses. And I think it really gives us some depth. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.